This has been a long requested video. I created a removable exterior staircase for my Adams Family project in 2015. That was before I even started my YouTube channel. It's one of the last things I did on my blog. And ever since then, people have been asking me for a tutorial. I haven't really had a need to create another removable exterior staircase until now. There might be a few reasons why you would need one of these. The staircase for the Adams Family needed to go from one side of the house to the other, and those two pieces of house were not glued together permanently, and in order to transport it, I needed to be able to take the staircase apart. So that's where the original idea came from. I don't have that issue with the Fairfield, but I do need an exterior staircase because I am very limited on the amount of floor space I have on the inside. Also, if I want to continue to work in this space, because it's half scale, it's kind of hard to get my giant one to one scale hands inside of the rooms. So having the staircase be removable is going to be incredibly helpful as I continue to work on this. The original kit does not come with stairs that go from the second to the third floor. So if you are working on the Fairfield and you do want stairs, this might be helpful. So let's get started. To start creating my pattern, I'm first going to lay my dollhouse down on my work surface. I'm putting down a soft piece of fabric to protect it. I realized I started creating this banister for the opening in the third floor a little too early. I still have quite a bit I need to do in that space, so I'm removing it for now and will add it back again later. I have this column that I built previously. It's not glued in yet and I'm not going to glue it in for a while, but I am going to put it in place because it's going to be important to build my stairs around. To make sure that my pattern is accurate, I'm going to mark out the top and bottom of each floor. I'm using a stiff piece of mat board or you can use cardboard, something that's not going to droop like paper. Make sure to label each floor so you don't get confused once you start drawing out the stairs. Let's quickly prep for the math part. The things you're going to see me using are a ruler that has both inches and centimeters. I end up working in both so this is helpful, but not necessary if you only have a ruler that's in inches or you only have a ruler that's in centimeters. I'm also going to be using a protractor, which will help me get the correct angle for the stairs. If you don't have a protractor, I did find a printable protractor, and I'm gonna put the link in the description box below. You can print it off and it will work no problem. You're also going to see me using a drafting triangle, which is not necessary. It's just helping me get some straight lines. You can also use a ruler and just your work mat to make sure that the lines are going straight across the page. You will also need paper and a pencil with a pretty sharp point. And if you're one where math makes you anxious, I highly suggest a comfort drink and a snack. Color coordination optional. All right, let's draw some stairs. To begin, I'm simply going to transfer the floor markings I made on the mat board onto my piece of paper. If you're working in 112 scale, you may need to tape a few pieces of paper together. Thankfully for half scale, it's all going to fit on one page. I drew those lines all the way across the page and labeled them. Stair angles are typically between 30 to 50 degrees, so I'm going to go right in the center and do a 40 degree angle to start mapping out my stairs. I'm using a very old and beat up protractor to do this. To use a protractor, you're just going to set the center crosshairs on a dot that you drew on the top of the second floor, and then you're gonna put another dot at the 40 degree mark on the outside of the protractor. Then you can connect these two dots and this will give you a 40 degree angle. You wanna make sure that line goes all the way up and over the third floor. If you're wanting more of a steep set of stairs, you can go with a 50 degree angle, but if you're wanting more of a gentle slope, you can go with 30. I just decided to go right in the middle with a 40 degree angle. Now we're going to be working on the rise of the stairs, which is how far your foot has to rise up to get to the next step. I'm going to be working with an eight inch real life rise. And so I'm going to try and translate that into my scale. Eight inches is about two thirds of a ruler or two thirds of 12 inches. To apply this to 112 scale, I'm going to be trying to find two thirds of one inch, which is approximately 11 16 or 17 millimeters. 
The fair field, however, is in 124 scale or half scale, so I'm going to have to translate the same idea to half inch, which leaves me with 5 16 inch of a rise or 8 millimeters. When you get to this small of a scale, it is much easier to use the metric system than the imperial system. What I'm going to do is start putting lines that are 8 millimeters apart, starting from the top line of my third floor. This is going to be the top of my staircase. So my first line is already drawn for me. It's just this very top floor. I'm going to go eight millimeters down and add another mark. I'm going to continue to do this all the way down to the top of the second floor. Once you are done marking out all these measurements, you may find that they don't fit evenly in your space. So I have eight millimeters all the way down, and what you will see is I have a larger step that's going to be at the bottom. To fix this, you could go back and try seven millimeters or nine millimeters and mark those out to see if they fit better, but I'm okay with having an extra large bottom step. No one's really going to see it, and it just doesn't really bother me that much. But if it does bother you, feel free to mess with those rise measurements. The next part is pretty easy. You just need to place your pencil at the point at the very top of the stairs where the eight millimeter mark that we just put and the diagonal meet and then draw a line straight down to the line below it. I marked all of our eight millimeter measurements in red so that you could clearly see it. And I'm doing this part in blue. This is going to create the front of our step. And we know that these lines are all going to be eight millimeters in measurement because that's why we drew the lines. So this is where you're creating the rise. Now we don't really have to calculate the run that's being calculated for us as we are drawing this. So now we have our stair pattern that should run perfectly from the top of the second floor up to the top of the third floor. This may change later, but I'm going to go ahead and draw in a landing. It looks like I'm doing about an inch and a half for the landing of the stairs. This is just going to allow me to draw the back of the stairs so that I can cut out my pattern. Otherwise, it's just a zigzag line. As I said before, the run kind of ended up being calculated for us, but in case you're curious of what it ended up being, it was about 10 millimeters once I had completed drawing it. Now the tread is the piece that goes on top of the stair that completes it. And typically there is a small lip that overhangs the stair below it. So I'm going to be adding one millimeter to my 10 millimeter measurement for the run, and that's going to give me an 11 millimeter tread. And that's something I'm going to worry about once I get the stairs constructed. So just keep that measurement in mind for later. I made a copy of my pattern so I was free to cut it out and I knew I wouldn't mess it up along the way. And I just carefully started cutting along the blue line. I made sure to keep in the two areas that have where my second floor and my third floor are with the thicknesses because that may be helpful down the road. And in case any of you were wondering how close I was to the kit, the kit stairs from the first to the second floor had 14 steps and my stairs ended up with 13. So pretty close to Greenleaf's measurement, but of course you could have adjusted it and it might have added an extra step if you had decided to mess with the rise measurement. I will put the pattern that I created in the description box below if you want to print it out and have a closer look. However, most likely you're going to have to draft your own pattern to specifically fit your house. Even if you're using a fair field, you are going to want to double check that your third floor and second floor floors are at the same height mine were. This project has been notoriously wonky, so those are some of the things you'll have to double check. The pattern that I just drew is great for a generic staircase that's going to go up against the wall. However, I do not have this much space. I need to turn my staircase. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. Now that we did all that work just to get a pattern, let's check and see how it's fitting. As you can see, my floors are working, like it, my floors are in the proper place because I measured out that to begin with, but this staircase is going to block off the entire room if I leave it as just one long staircase. And that's not what I wanna do. So I'm going to try and turn it and it's going to turn out very similar to the way I did the Adams Family staircase. I want it to start against this side wall and then it's going to turn and go outside of the house. 
I'm cutting off part of the second floor measurement because I want my pattern to sit flat on top of the carpet that's inside of my second floor area. This way I can see how far I can get my stairs to go up the side wall. I'm trying to see where the last step would be that would make sense and then I'm going to cut it off along the red line that's going to be the top step for the first section of my stairs. I'm going to put the top section to the side, that's going to be section two, and I'm just going to worry about the section that I have that's sitting on top of the shag green carpet. Before moving forward with constructing the stairs, I need to make a few adjustments to my pattern. I taped it to my wall where I want it to be. I still have this little piece hanging on that shows me where my floor is. Uh, it's not quite necessary at this point, but I wasn't quite sure if I still needed that measurement, so I left it on and just folded it out of place. I want to make sure that the back of my stairs are lining up with the exterior wall. So I put a mark and then connected those lines together, so that's going to be the back of this stair structure. Next, I needed a platform that was going to extend into the exterior, which was also going to be the landing space for my second or my section two set of stairs. I got this width because I knew my steps were going to be about an inch wide, and so I knew my platform needed to extend outside the wall about an inch. So here's how my pattern has been cut apart so far, and this is how I have my section one pattern looking. I'm going to be transferring this onto a piece of mat board. I like to build things out of mat board. You can also build this from wood. A 16th inch thick wood would work really well, both for 12 scale or 124 scale. I'm cutting out the pattern exactly and I'm making two pieces and this is going to help me start creating my structure. Because I knew my steps were going to be about an inch wide, I'm creating a 7 8 inch wide thick strip of mat board that's going to go in between my two exterior pieces so that I can start constructing everything together. You can really make your steps as wide as you want. Instead of calling this the 7 8 inch piece, I'm just going to call it the stair interior thickness and then you can just create it however thick you want. Our rise measurement was 8 millimeters. I'm double checking here. Everything is still 8 millimeters between each step. To create the rise front panels, I am going to be cutting this from the stair interior thickness piece that I just created. For me, that was 7 8 inch thick. I'm going to be cutting it a little bit longer than 8 millimeters. 8 millimeters would line up perfectly, but it's a little bit easier to make it longer. It will drop down below the uh, line that you have for the rise, but that's okay. You will also have to custom cut a piece for the front step that will uh, perfectly enclose that area. Just because you can't make that too long, you'll have to cut it off. I just carefully lined up each rise with the top of the step and didn't worry about it going too far below because you won't be able to see that once everything's done. I added an extra interior thickness piece just so that my stairs had something else to glue onto besides just my rise pieces. This is going to help strengthen my stair piece. Now I'm going to add glue to the other side and glue it onto my stairs. Now we have something that's actually looking like a staircase, which is really exciting. I'm making sure everything is lined up while the glue is drying and that nothing is warping or moving out of place. Now it's time to enclose the bottom and the back side of the stairs. Again, I'm using the stair interior thickness piece that I cut earlier. I'm just going to be marking the size that it needs to be, cutting it off and gluing it in. I am adding some washers to the inside of these stairs. They are very small because this is half scale and they do need to sit and be the base for the stairs or section two of the stairs that sit above it. So I do want it to have some weight. I actually could have even added a few more washers once I finish this, but I'm very glad I did this because I can't imagine how lightweight they would be if I hadn't. I'm also going to be closing up the back with that same interior thickness and also the platform. Now this is not going to have a tread on top of it yet. I am still closing it up, but I will be adding the tread or the platform top at the end of constructing the steps. 
So here you can see my finished section one. Oh, actually it's not finished. We still need to put the treads on there. I am going to be making my treads 11 millimeters. And so I'm just going to cut one long piece of mat board that is exactly 11 millimeters. And then I can cut them down to whatever looks right for my stairs. Now I know this set of stairs is going to be up against a wall, so I don't want any overhang on the side where my thumb is. But I do want a little overhang on the other side, which is going to be in the living room area. So I'm just going to take my pencil and mark off how long I want the treads to be, and then I can cut them down easily and start adding them to my steps. I am using a Fisker straight cutter this whole time, and this has made this whole project very, very easy, except for cutting out the um, step patterns themselves. But cutting the straight edge pieces was very easy. I glued those on and now I have my section one finished. Again, I don't have a top tread yet, but I will be adding that later. Let's go ahead and put it into the house. This is when I quickly realized that I had an issue with the baseboards. I do not want to take the baseboard out of the house that I already put in, so I am going to have to cut a groove in my stairs so that it fits a little bit better once inside. The first section of our staircase is complete. Whew. Now it's time to work on the second section of my staircase, and this is where I'm going to be working really hard to make sure that it fits the area I have available. I guess in reality I am going to be doing this in three sections because in a few minutes you will see that I cut the very top stair off of the second section. So I will refer to that as my third section even though it will be connected to the second section which I'm about to make. That'll make more sense in just a few minutes. Alright, so let's make the second and third section of the staircase. It may be a bit hard to see on camera, but I was noticing as I was fitting my pattern that I didn't feel like there was enough room for my top step once I had put this second section up to this area. So I am going to cut off my top step and I'm going to make my final step be stepping onto the third floor. And I, again, I hope this will make sense as I begin to create it. So what I have here is one step less, so it won't really reach the third floor yet. I decided to cut off the platform part that I had built. I don't need that anymore. And then I drew a diagonal line that was parallel with the tops of each step. And this is going to create a stair that goes up and it doesn't have like a platform that connects to any floor. I'm going to do the same steps I did with section one where I'm going to draw these pieces on mat board and I'm going to cut two of them for either side. I'm adding my rise sections first and in this one I did the treads next. I left the top tread off again and then I covered it with the stair interior thickness so that I had my completed section two. I did this just the same way I did for the first one. I know that went a little bit quickly, but here you can really see that the top step is missing and that's because we're gonna make the third floor the top step. So I want this to be kind of like a clip that holds onto the top and this is what I also did for my Adams Family staircase. Through this planning process, I realized I did need to remove some more of that banister so I can create a platform that goes on this third floor. I'm carefully trying to do this without ruining my flooring, although I end up aging it at the end of this video anyway. Trying to figure out what's going to work best as the very top platform for my stairs, I ended up deciding on a one inch by one inch platform and this is just going to sit right on the top of the third floor. Now I'm going to create the step down. So this is going to be my custom rise for that very top step. I'm going to make sure it's the right length for my platform and cut it down. So now we have kind of an L bracket that's just going to sit and balance right there on top of the third floor. Now I can hold my section two steps up to section three and I can see where the two meet. They are going to be glued together. I do need to make room for my tread so I'm going to mark with a pencil where I need to cut that out so that my tread can stick out the other side and I can have a flat place to glue section three to section two. 
After cutting that out, I can go ahead and dry fit it to make sure that everything is looking good. I'm using tacky glue to glue it together as I have the rest of everything. Tacky glue works really well with matte board and letting that dry completely. I did notice once I attach this that I did have a little extra corner that's sticking out underneath the section two stairs. So I will cut that off and then you won't even notice that that is there. Now that the two sections are permanently glued together, I can add this top tread, which is going to be a custom sized piece. So I just added a piece and marked off how big I wanted it to be. Moving forward with creating that clamp type thing that I talked about, this is just going to help steady this second section of the steps. I am going to be marking how thick the floor is for the third floor, because that's the floor it's going to be holding onto. I also need to take into consideration this column, even though it's not permanently glued in now, it will be later. So I need to make sure that the clamp that I put in is going to be able to bypass this column and I'm not going to have any conflicts. So I'm just marking out where that column is going to be. Now I'm going to create a double thickness of mat board and I'm gluing it just underneath that line I created, which shows me how thick the floor is. I am trying to glue these pieces on as perpendicular as possible. They do look a little crooked, but they will hold onto the floor. In order to try and square these up a little bit, I am adding a piece onto the back of the L bracket, and I'm hoping this will help keep the bracket or the clamp piece that I just created in place so that it doesn't warp too much when I'm taking the stairs on and off. So this is the final look of how everything is going together. I will show you how it goes onto the house. The floor is just going to slip in between those two mat board pieces that I put on there and it's going to help hold the stairs in place. You can also see that uh, extra piece that I added to square it up. It just slides along that opening, which is the opening in the third floor. And so far I'm happy with how it's coming along, but there are a few more things that we need to do. Now that all the steps sections are built individually, I'm going to be working on some details that make it all come together as one staircase and that also make it work with the house so that everything fits as best as possible. As I mentioned previously, I need to cut a groove in the side of my stairs so that it will fit a little bit better against the wall. Now, I don't know if you've noticed yet, I have not noticed yet, but I am cutting this groove in the wrong side of the stairs. And I don't know how things like this make you feel, but I feel a little... So what I'm going to do is try to put that together. I realized the pieces uh, weren't going to go back together. I will fix that in a bit. So I turned it over and I recut the groove on the correct side of the stairs. So this is why I always suggest dry fitting so you don't make these mistakes. And then I cut another piece of mat board to cover up my first mistake. So that'll be just one of those little things that I know is in there and anyone who watches this video knows is in there, but nobody else will really notice. Another thing I'm going to do is add this extra long panel along the back of section one. The reason I'm doing this is because when the stairs are in place, you can see the shag rug carpet showing out of the bottom. Now I've never seen stairs where there's carpeting underneath the structure of the stairs. So this extra long piece is going to help cover that when the stairs are put in place. I also need to add this top tread, which is going to double as a platform where the second section can rest. So I'm marking out how big I want it to be. And then I'm also going to create this little L jut out shape that's going to go in the direction where my stairs go up to the third floor. And so I just use my stairs as a pattern to know how thick it needs to be. Once I'm happy with the shape and I've dry fit everything to make sure it's going in the correct direction, I can glue it in place and I know that this is going to be a good platform for this other section to rest. Now I could glue this all together if I wanted to because I do not have to take the stairs apart like I did for my Adams Family project. However, I'm going to leave it separate for now. I may glue them in permanently later on. 
The next step is not necessary, but I think it gives a nice detailed touch. I'm going to be adding these tiny little triangles that look like supports that are holding up each platform. I think these could have been a little bit bigger. They could have been more ornate. It's really up to you, but I think adding in structural elements when in miniature they're not really necessary do add a bit of realism to the things that we're making. I'm also going to be adding these little triangles, which were a little bit too big, for the platform that I just created at the top of these steps. And I do think this makes it look like a much more believable platform that the upper stairs could be resting on. And I just, I, it makes so much more sense. It looks like there's actually structure underneath each of these pieces. On the steps I made for the Adams Family, I added little strips of wood to make it look like there was some wood veneer or wood detailing on the outside. I'm leaving these pretty plain, but really they're finished. They're ready to go into the house. I am going to be doing a little bit of sanding just on any sharp edges because I do want it to have a worn look. And then I am painting a base coat of brown. This is acrylic paint because I want it to look like they are wooden stairs that's just, you know, maybe left over from the Victorian time of this house and never really got wallpapered or painted. I'm of course going to be adding some aging. I'm using some dry brushing using black paint. I think I also dry brushed with another brown, adding details here and there, especially getting lots of dirt and grime into those little crevices. And now we can put it in for our final look at the stairs. I know it's always hard to tell how long a project takes from watching an edited video, but really these only took me a couple days of working a few hours each day to put together. If you create a pattern first, follow the pattern, and work piece by piece, they go together very quickly. It was at this point I realized I needed to do a little bit more aging on the third floor. This linoleum that's up here is looking much too nice white and bright, and so I wanted to age it down with a little bit of watered down brown paint. This of course was not necessary for a stair video, but a lot of times when I create something new, I get so excited about it in the project and I, I just want it to look right. So I also painted the edges brown and I feel like it has a much more cohesive look. Of course, there's a lot more to do to get this area ready, but it's getting closer and closer each time I work on it. I did notice by placing my little Aira figurine that there is not enough headspace to really get up these stairs. So I'm going to be using some wire cutters to remove this part of the roof. I haven't put the shingles on yet, so I'm not too worried about just like tearing this part off, but it gives a little bit more headspace. It's not quite right, but it's a little bit closer than it was. Okay, so you're still gonna have to kind of duck to like crawl up the stairs to get into the attic in theory but it's supposed to be like a teenager kid hangout and you know when you're kids you just you kind of go up on hands and feet up the stairs anyway did y'all do that i did that but as i said before it's dollhouse stairs they don't really have to be to code you don't have to have the correct headspace you're definitely welcome to if you want to make sure that there is that realism i do think some people notice it the large amount of people don't really notice if you don't have the correct headspace for stairs but it's up to you here are a few close-up shots of the stairs it is incredibly difficult to film inside this tiny half scale house so i'm hoping that these photos will kind of show you how it looks up close I really do love how the interior of the Fairfield ends up looking. It does look like it's such a small space, but once you start putting in half-scale furniture, it really does open up a bit. Of course, it's all about perspective and scale in this hobby. So that's all I have for you today. I hope it was helpful and not too boring, and now you know how to create an exterior removable staircase if you need one for your project.
This tutorial could also be useful for those of you who want a permanent staircase but need it to curve around a corner. You could use the same process where you draw the pattern of what a typical run of a staircase would be. You cut it into sections and slowly work section by section to turn it around the wall. Maybe you have a tower that needs stairs. I'll probably use a similar method to this when I create the stairs that go up to the attic in the Beetlejuice house. I am so glad that this tutorial is complete and now out there for anyone who wants to use it. It had been seven years since I created those stairs for the Adams Family Project. I really was happy with how they came out then and kind of sad that I didn't make a tutorial at that time. Let me know if you found this helpful. If you think you're going to be using it for your own project, make sure to like, hit the subscribe button down below if you think you'll want to stick around for more. I hope you all have an amazing week, and I will, oh, let me put the stairs on, hold on, stairs, 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 stairs. I hope you all have an amazing week, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. I'm trying to make mad faces for like when I messed up, but really it was more like this. It's a mixture of mad and sad. Why? I try to spread the math-heavy tutorials out. Seven years apart. Just kidding.